Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. We have returned. It's Lee Gunlock, Eric, and Mark here with you for a little step back into time and also a look forward into the future because we are looking at past world champions, revisiting the rosters and asking, where are they now? You know, and we're going to, we're starting in 2013 because I'll save you the trouble of season one and season two. Where are they now? They're all retired because this was 15 years ago. A long time ago, longer than you think when you look back on something like this. But yes, it is good to take this occasional trip in the time machine to go back, examine how you felt about it when you saw the championship happen, and then how things have played out since then for these players, for these organizations, the journeys since the championship moments. So we go to 2013, the beginning of that SKT and really LCK and Korea dominance. And you remember that old OG roster? Probably the most surprising thing of going through these is that two of these guys are still actively playing on squads. Obviously, Faker is going to pop up multiple times throughout these world champions, but both him and Big Daddy Impact still starters a decade plus later. The grandpa of the LCS. Yes, Mr. Impact hanging around with some LCK origins in the back closet to go through. And yes, that is a championship origin coming through as well. This is a great year to start off and look back on. So many people have great memories of this championship. And of course, that check-in, and especially as far back as it is, to check in and say, hey, we've still got two guys hanging around and performing one of them a very recent world championship and arguably the best at his position. And then the other guy is a mainstay figure, stable pillar in his region that he has moved on to. And as well, a still a very strong contributing player. Crazy to think back when you dial the clock that far back. And the rest of this roster going to be part of a theme as you see going on these. And that's Bangi, Piglet, Pumandu, all retired as players. Bangi was coaching T1. Last year, before they won Worlds, you remember earlier in the year he was with T1. Piglet, last year, 2023, was coaching T1 rookies. Pumandu, he's been coaching with T1 at times. He was last coaching uh, with Damwon in 2021. And even Koma, coming back to T1 as the coach. So there's a theme here of T1 looking after their own. That's the other one that went under the radar for me is, again, Coma coming back and tiling the clock all the way there to see him with these young guys at the time. And you're right. It is that signif you know, signal, and you'll see it throughout the rest of talking about this list. You'll notice a couple of these other guys. There's a couple that hang around, but most of them go on to find other projects, other avenues, other pastures to try and find success. T1, they lock you down. They say, you're one of us. You're our squad. We're keeping you through. Good to see that. You love to see them when they're the coaching side as well. And then as well, you talk even, you will see it further on down the line. You got some streamers still, content creators going through the T1 organization. And why leave the org if you don't have to? If they're going to give you transition a different job when your playing career is done, T1's the spot you want to stick around at. I think arguably nobody has shown better than T1 on how they like to transition players from a playing career to try and set them up, build an audience around them for a streaming content creating career and then other avenues to promote and promote, uh, promote that type of stream, right? You know, we look at players like Wolf, the little shows that they've as well given. You can go in the future and we'll talk about that one when we get to his championship team. But first, we're going to the new era of Korean dominance. Samsung White in 2014, obviously iconic names uh, across the board for this roster and very different career trajectories for all these guys post 2014 World Championship. Starting with Looper, who's been retired the longest, last played in 2017. And you remember that was the forgetful times where he was hanging out on Echo Fox. Unfortunately, I do remember. I haven't been able to forget those Echo Fox days. I mean, still, there's an initial excitement about hearing about that announcement because you are thinking, yes, we're getting a world champion over to the LCS. Not quite the world champion that you were trying to get over at that point. Uh, I think you look back on this roster and it's definitely different than when you feel about the 20, uh, you know, looking back at SKT's very first championship and how things played out for those iconic players, not quite the same fate for Samsung White. 
but the the coaching tree that has come from this squad because you have current era again everyone starting on the squad is retired as a player now but dandy and mata two head coaches or i don't know if head coaches is the official title coaching staff with two of the best teams in the lck dandy is with hanwha life and mata coming into this year is on gen g so two of the greatest minds in league of legends history makes sense they're still coaching some of the best teams yeah, it's only what you would expect to see, that type of creativity, that type of pushing progression on how you want to view the meta, the game, these champions and things like that. You could see it all the way back in time with these cha with these players and how they've transitioned now towards that coaching role. Danny, as you mentioned, is definitely someone that I think has really expanded upon that avenue for him in his career. And they've both coached a couple of different teams leading up to where uh, they find themselves now. And then Pawn also did coach with Liv Sandbox a little, a couple of years uh, removed from that in 2022. And Imp, we last saw him on the Rift in 2019 with JDG of all squads. You remember JDG Imp? I, I, I barely, barely have a memory of JDG Imp. I remember it not exactly being as fruitful as the Samsung white era of Imp. Hard, hard to match that one, uh, you know, that level of play that we were getting out of him on Samsung White. But yeah, I, I think he was kind of a sub and didn't really start many games. It's really, you remember him, Samsung White, and then, of course, uh, the stint with LGD as well when he was still at that world-class level. But no question, all these guys were in the conversation at one point uh, or another well, 2014, for being best in their respective roles. So glad to see a lot of them still hanging around the scene into 2015 SKT and obviously there's a bit of repeat here because obviously Faker still on the roster, Bengi still on the roster so the endings the same for then but you had Marin come in for this year and he's been retired he had the stint in the LPL but it was again recently we saw him in the LCS 2023 he was coaching Team Liquid. Yes we did get the return finally one of the ones i think a lot of people have been kind of waiting to see uh yeah and have him around in the scene and have that type of role this is a guy that can provide it one of the legends of top lane and legends of the skt dynasty and what they were able to build you can go through other line other roles in this position as well and find other guys hanging around in the scene contributing in other ways and um you know, there was hype when he came back to the LCK with Afrika. He jumped around a couple spots and then did this coaching, as I mentioned, but obviously never reaching that impact that he had as one of the GOAT top laners uh, over on SKT. Easy Hoon, the other mid lane guy you can talk about on SKT, who also, you know, went to the LPL, got the bag after being Faker substitute, and a guy who kind of shifted around, but even in 2023, he was coaching with Weibo Gaming for a little bit. So yet another former world champion who transitioned into that coaching role as even as short lived as it might have been. It really does remind you that these champions, they're all littered around the landscape of League of Legends right now in the global scene and where they moved on to, where they have their effect. Someone like Marin, all the way through, you're looking through and what he's been able to do, of course, the mainstay, Faker. Right, we got to talk about Faker. You always got to talk about Faker on these lineups, but this is one of those ones, again, where you're checking in even on only the gap between the previous World Championship and this one. There's stuff to talk about and look at and the growth and what he's accomplishing and what fire he is starting to set on that global scene. It's only going to get bigger from this point on for Faker as well, so keep tracking. And the, the bottling for this SKT squad... Bang & Wolf, iconic, of course. You alluded to it. They transition into, well, they went very different ways after uh, SKT. But eventually, they come back home. They're both streamers, content creators under that SKT slash T1 banner. It, it just feels right to see guys like this coming home. And now, obviously, Wolf, all the co-streaming that he does for a lot of these events, he's I, I got to watch for reactions. Whenever Faker makes a play, you got to go see Wolf's reaction because Faker's still his boy. I love it, my man. This guy was in the trenches, in the thick of it for the most successful run in T1's history. Of course, the dynasty run, those world championships. He dealt with all the anxiety, all the pressure, all of these things. 
and he gets to reap the reward of not only those championships, but now this type of career that he's got afterwards with T1, where he gets to be pretty much Mr. T1 content creation all around. And as you mentioned, gets to still support his boy, go over the very best of Faker's highlights. This is a good story. Love to see that from this bottom lane. And again, it goes to show not only the T1 mindset, because you can trace this back a little further than him individually, but I got to give my, my shout out to our boy, Mr. Joe Marsh, the CEO. He is absolutely keeping this trend alive with T1. And, you know, you often see this with uh, traditional sports, guys who have been stuck with an organization for many, many, many years and becomes the face of that franchise. They look after their own, whether it's a job as a commentator, analyst with the squad or part-time host, whatever capacity it is. They look after their own that have brought them success. Exactly what happened uh, with Wolf and Bang and if you remember their playing careers, you know, the last time we saw them actually as players for Wolf, it was super massive in the TCL. He had a year there and bang, it wasn't EG. It wasn't 100 Thieves. Do we remember a freak of freaks bang? Because it, it wasn't pretty at times. I remember it. I do remember it. Unfortunately, it was not the effect that I think a lot of people were hoping to see the return to the LCK. A lot of people, myself included, feel like there was more to offer during his LCS years. It was, you know, whether it was a question about the environment, other things that factored in to where you didn't get the bang that is that world champion, the player that did have contributions, crucial contributions to the world championships that SKT was able to build up as a dynasty didn't have the same type of success later on and especially moving back to the lck and as you mentioned for wolf we forget forget the tcl and i mean yeah, at that point it gets even tougher though because you got to forget about the wolf jungle uh, experiment that had to be played a couple times during that era of t1 sometimes you only need to do an experiment a couple times to say this one won't work that's the scientific way to break it down we flipped the calendar into 2016 SKT, and obviously, again, a lot of crossover. The bot lane returns, Faker is back, but the two changes, big changes we get. Duke comes in for Marin, and then you have Blank playing alongside uh, Mr. Bengi in that jungle spot. Duke is retired, but another guy who was coaching as late as 2023, he was with NIP. Yeah, and another player that also found another world championship later on down the line is one that we're going to have to talk about because this is what you look at with this legacy. You know, you go back, you know, we already did this talking about Faker and that type of little gap between them. Here it is, first appearance for Duke, and we get to talk about what type of role he played in the top side for this T1 team, the type of tank options he would provide. And, and at the time, of course, you know, well, Tank Echo being one of the ones you can throw down into that list. And I always got to give my boy my shout out because that's my very first pentakill, old SKT Echo. Thank you, Duke, for the skin. And then Blank, I, Duke is one of the most criminally underrated top laners in the history of SKT. Blank, I feel like people just assume after 2017, he retired and was never to be heard of uh, again or after 2018. But he's had a pretty damn good career in the LJL for multiple splits. He's pretty much been that main rival for DFM, that nation focused me, always coming out at these international events. But the Soft Bank Hawks, he was playing there last year in 2023. Yes, sir. Don't forget about it. I think it is one of those ones where, of course, it's not really about the quality of play from blank that anybody is saying has really gone away or, you know, went, you know, mysterious type of thing. It really has just been about being hidden in a league, in a region like the LJL and not the type of attention that a lot of people are bringing to it. And maybe, you know, again, the differences in, in where detonation focused me and how they're succeeding on the international stage, all these things, it's a different type of thing, but you do got to look at the individual and yes, blank has had that continued success, you know, stable in the LJL for years here we're looking at 2013 to 2016 Vaker and impact are the only world champions from those four years that are still playing that's the craziest thing about that stat is when you look at it and it's at the very beginning of all these ones that yeah. we're talking about that's those two guys hanging around and then we can go all loop it all the way back around to the double t1 world championships to cap off that T skt dynasty era and you're still talking about impact and fakers the only ones hanging around that is longevity. Luckily, 
when you get up to 2017, you've got some other guys who are still kicking around the old bucket of bolts. This is Samsung Galaxy, the pre-Gen G era, and obviously those guys I alluded to, Ruler and Core JJ, both still suiting up. I mean, Ruler even better than he was in 2017. Core JJ's been on Team Liquid for what is it now, like five years? He's been on this squad. Captain America now Whew. for Team Liquid Core JJ returned to the LCS after uh, his time in the LCK played out, which I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly here is you know just a year or so after the the championship run for the Samsung Galaxy squad. Ruler, as you mentioned, pretty much is peaking, I think, in his career at this point to think about where we've gone from and what type of levels he is playing at and contributing at. Definitely uh, one of these players that you got to throw into that legendary status alongside Faker and Impact that we're talking about in this list. But even that, you got to see the other similarities, and that is following in the path of the P1 organization and keeping some of these guys in-house, finding ways either through coaching or streaming to keep these guys part of the organization. Yeah, and obviously both QV and Ambition, content creators, streamers with them. Ambition, it was immediately 2018. He's done with Gen G. He was already getting subbed out for Haru a lot that year, and he immediately stepped into that role being a focal point for this Genji organization and Cuve played a year in 2020 with Hanwha Life before retiring and stepping into that uh, role within the Genji organization and Crown right now we're talking about him as the coach for Genji Academy so Genji absolutely just like T1 looking out after the Rome. I don't want to say it's, it's the levels of, of bang on Afrika, but I think we can uh, move past the QV Hanwha life era as well as... as How about the crown be. optic era or CLG crown? I, the sparkles, sprinkle sparkles. Optic so, was better than CLG crown. We'll say absolutely. that. Absolutely. But let's just say that I'm very happy to hear that crown is doing well now where he is uh, coaching in that type of situation. I know he's also been a player that has gone through some some mental issues as well, and, and, and so wishing him the very best in that situation. But yeah, this is absolutely one where you can look back on and find Core JJ Ruler, as we already talked about, continuing their careers and what has happened for them. Core JJ, you know, extremely successful in North America for a period of time with Team Liquid, and then... You know, you're talking about that that legacy that is created by having ambition instantly become that streamer for Gen G. I remember always one of the top guys that you'd want to watch for co-streaming for LCK or keep up with it in that type of situation. Hear what he's that input from him, big part of it. Shout out to QV as well, contributing for the Gen G team. QV is the entertainment factor, ambition more that analytical breakdown yeah. type of mind uh, that you get when watching these pro games and then obviously Haru a guy we've forgotten about taking some games from ambition but he was playing in 2023 in the TCL as well for super massive so guy hasn't retired uh he's still I think a free agent heading into maybe more opportunities for 2024 2018 Invictus Gaming and as we get to the more recent world champions people are still playing the most of these rosters technically Nobody on this IG squad is retired. The Shy taking a competitive hiatus. And then you've got both Ning and Baolan who were playing in 2023 but are free agents and teamless right now. Yes, and I think uh, th there's a certain sensitivity to talk about with Ning and Baolan and we're looking back on this one. And one where you do got to give respect for what is accomplished. And that is the 2018 World Championship from this IG roster. As you laid out, getting a little bit more recent, gonna start seeing a lot more of these names pop around, hang around. Maybe, you know, 2018 is just pushing on that limit of where we're gonna see the full roster sticking around. But you can look at this one, you still have got impactful players on this lineup contributing in the LPL. Rookie, of course, Jackie Love. And as you already mentioned, the shy taking a little bit of a step back, but we expect to see him back this year at some point. Yeah, and you can talk about the levels of Balon and Ning taking significant dips from that time on 2018, but the Shy is fresh off a World Finals berth. Rookie looking like a resurgence on Ninjas in Pajamas, and Jackie Love is still one of the best 80 carries in the LPL, so no signs of slowing down from who was the rookie uh, on that squad and rookie himself on NIP all these years later. 
I think you can look at it and, and individually find still the pop-offs that we know and love the shy for, but there have been some dark days and some dark times for him individually, but we are on that upswing rebound redemption arc for him. Rookie, as you mentioned, really resurging with ninjas in pajamas, but has been a relatively consistent, stable, top performing option as a mid laner in the LPL since then. And of course, Jackie Love, he's still Jackie Love, my man. There has been absolutely zero change. He offers you that high octane, unlimited potential for an ADC down in the bottom lane with a couple of whoopsies mixed in here or there. That is the Jackie Love special. One of the most exciting players to watch, just like he was on IG in 2018, 2019. And then how about Coach Kim on this squad? His trajectory is insane. He's basically coached on every possible team. There was T1 thrown in there, some Dom1 auction, and latest. People keep giving him pretty damn good jobs because now he's on Gen G. Mercenary for hire, and my man, he has had success. That is the important thing to keep track of with this one. I think there can be something said for maybe not finding that permanent home or a longer landing spot type of thing to run it through but yes success nonetheless for mr coach kim and the craziest thing this is this is just going to be part one we got 2019 to modern day to break down all these world champions because there's a lot to talk about but just look at how rare it is for a world championship roster to stick around the same starting five the very next year it's insane. Never mind sticking around the very next year and then to see how time can change some of these things even furthermore as you extend it brings into how much of an appreciation you can have in the current day and age to see T1 reunite the squad after their most recent world championship. It doesn't happen very often. And even when it does happen, you're not guaranteed that continued success to move on further through. Always a fun time to stop in, turn back that clock, dial in to some of these old teams and find out where they are now. And most of the time, it's money. You can't afford to re-sign an entire <laughs> world championship roster. They get exploded to the wayside, as we will see with the future teams for part two of these videos. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.